Hi, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, not totally sure what I want to talk about this week. I like, I'm pretty sure I had an idea or something to talk about at some point between filming the last one and doing this one. Now my brain's gone completely blank. Uh, it's just been one of those sorts of days, I guess. Um, yeah, no idea what I'm going to talk about. It's great. <laughs> um, I guess I can, for no reason, talk about the fact that we are now in spring. Yeah. I mean, technically we've been in spring for just over a week at this point. Um... But yeah, spring is definitely my favourite season, um, not least because it's the season when my birthday is, so I am slightly biased for that reason, just saying. Um, so yeah, I, I really like spring, I also really like autumn, and I like both those seasons for the same reason. The fact that it's warm, but not too hot, um, certainly sort of like towards the beginning of spring and the end of autumn you've got those really nice sort of in between these sort of temperatures that work best for me <laughs> so I don't like being too hot and I don't like being too cold but of, of the two I would rather be cold than hot because it's easier to get yourself warm than it is to cool yourself down um, or at least it's easier for me to get myself warm than to cool myself down I don't like summer summer is my least favorite season so I would say for me it goes spring autumn winter summer um in terms of which seasons I like and which seasons I don't like um which I know is not un uncommon I, I know a lot of people who say that they like autumn or spring more than they like summer or winter so it's not that unusual and not that controversial to say hey I like spring spring is my favorite season for this reason um but yeah, I've never been a huge fan of summer. I've always found that summer is really draining. Um, and that's something that I've understood more um, post my uh, hypermobility diagnosis when I learned that, uh, hey, the reason I find summer such a, you know, such a draining season is because the heat is expanding my joints, which are already working harder than they should. Like, they're already too loose to begin with. So, like, the surrounding connective tissues and muscles are already having to work harder than normal in order to keep my body together. And, hey, here's this season where that's going to get harder again because the heat is the worst thing when your joints are loose. Um, however, I, I also know and appreciate there are certain conditions that improve during the summer for the exact same reason, because the expansion um, caused by the heat for certain conditions is beneficial um, for me. However, no, it, it's draining. Um, I usually find that the summer months are the months where if I'm going to have a serious flare up, it's probably going to be during the summer. Um, and it's harder to recover from those flare ups in the summer because everything is in like a much more um, augmented position to where they would be normally and that's probably not the terminology that I want to use I can't really think about how to put it so yeah I like spring and I like autumn because they're not too hot and they're not too cold because again I although it's probably more for the fibromyalgia reason for not liking the cold because I'm very sensitive to the cold itself um, as I mentioned before that's why I don't use ice packs um, if something is flaring up um, I you know comparing the two, the the cold is more a localized thing, and it's easier to sort of like counteract it um by putting warm stuff on, or like putting your hands in your pockets, or like covering your ears, or whichever it may be. Um, opposed to the heat, where you can't really do very much about it, and it does tend to affect my whole body rather than just whatever is exposed to the cold. So. Yeah, it, that's one. Yeah, that's why I don't really like summer. But as I was saying, um, autumn and spring, you've got that nice balance between the two. Um, the only thing I, I tend to notice during those months um, is as it sort of gets warmer, 
and as it sort of like gets colder those sort of it's less stable for atmospheric pressure because obviously warmer days the pressure is different to, to what it is on colder days when it's raining the atmospheric pressure is different to what it is when it's sunny um, and you get a lot more variation in uh, spring and autumn and that plays up specifically my left ankle which is the one that I injured jumping off a castle um, so that's the only sort of downside to spring and summer is that my ankle will play up um, but it's not it doesn't stop me from doing anything it's annoying it's a bit niggly but for the most part I can just like I can just get on with it and just ignore it because that's what I've been doing with that ankle for a long time um, I'm fairly certain at this point I probably need to, to get it x-rayed just to make sure I'm not developing arthritis in it because uh, yeah that's that's something I should be worrying about <laughs> Um, both in terms of because it's an injured joint, um, a previously injured joint, and it was a like deep joint injury as well, um, to a part of the joint that can cause a lot of problems if it hasn't healed properly, um, and I suspect that it didn't quite heal properly, um, for, for various reasons. I mean, the fact that it, it plays up as much as it does, because it does play up quite a bit more than I let on, um, like more than 10 years later indicates that you know there's probably something didn't heal quite properly whether that was the actual fracture itself didn't heal properly which i suspect the, the actual fracture is, itself is fine uh what i suspect the issue is is the fact that i didn't get physio afterwards which would have helped the flexibility of that joint which is then causing the, the issues now because it's not as strong as it should be it's not as flexible as it should be because it did not receive the right aftercare I suspect that's more of the issue with it than anything else, but both because it is a previously injured joint and because my health and mobility means I'm more susceptible to early onset arthritis. Um, there are various joints in my body where I'm like, yeah, that's, that's a joint which I suspect is probably starting to become a little bit arthritic. Um, and my ankle is definitely one of them. Uh, I think my ankle is the only one which I would 100% say, yeah, if I got it x-rayed and they said it was arthritic now, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, everything else, I think, is still a few stages off of that, um, and it's just, you know, general, um, general aches and pains, more than it actually going arthritic at this point. Having said that, if I was sort of said, oh yeah, no, that is, and, and that is, then I'd be like, oh, okay, something is finally showing up on the x-rays, yay! Um, and I am going with, like, x-ray rather than um, blood tests, because it's osteoarthritis that I'm more at risk of than uh, rheumatoid arthritis, the difference being that uh, it's to do with the erosion of the joint itself opposed to inflammation although I'm probably just as susceptible to both because of the way the condition works it's the osteo that I'm more likely to get early than it is the uh, rheumatoid because it is to do with joint damage um, and I'm more susceptible to joint damage because of hypermobility I'm probably less so than some people with hypermobility because my actual like flexibility and joint movement is probably less than the average but at the same time my ligaments also struggle They're probably or have struggled um, due to weakness and whatever else at various points because like I do have the syndrome side of it it is something that is more of a concern because you can be like hypermobile and not be in pain <laughs> That is a thing, it's a genuine thing, a lot of people who have hypermobility don't also have the syndrome, which is where the pain bits come in. Um, the fact that I have both puts me at more risk of developing arthritis earlier, um, given the fact that compared to some people with hypermobility, I even, like syndrome or non-syndrome, I'm less flexible and less, like, less movey um, in those sorts of terms. But then a lot of my hypermobility is also weight bearing, um, which and I don't know what what kind of difference that makes to it as well. But I, I know that will probably make some difference in in certain parts of my body. So yeah, it's one of those things where 
if I were to, to name a body part that I think is already orthotic, I would say my ankle. Like 100% I would say my ankle, the way that it plays up, the, the general level of stiffness in it, um, which I, again I know is at least in part due to the fact that I was not given appropriate physio for it when um, the injury should have had physio on it, sort of like post uh, it coming out of the cast because I'd had physio on it before that point whilst the fracture was still not being treated. Um, I also know from trying to re-stretch the ankle through various exercises that I've done for my feet um, that there is definitely now more going on there than just the stiffness on its own so again I would 100% say if that x-ray was if that ankle was x-rayed and it was like oh yeah it's this sort of arthritic I would not be surprised like I would legitimately not be surprised at this point at all um, I'm like I'm fairly certain that it is, but it's not at a point where I'm not able to do the things that I want to on it. It just gets a bit painful and uncomfortable and whatever, so I can deal with it. It's fine. And as I said, there are very other various other joints that niggle quite a lot that I don't think are quite at the point of definitely being arthritis at this stage. Um, but I would also say that probably the the one that I need to sort of get on top of sooner rather than later, if it is likely to turn that way, is my jaw. Because um, again, so during the two weeks I had off, uh, the first few days the jaw was like pretty painful. There were a few incidents where I had to like literally stop talking to my family, going ah, because it was like getting that painful to talk with it. Then. Like the, the Thursday, Friday, it sort of settled down sort of a little bit. Um, then on the Saturday, uh, when I was going to my dad, I uh, got caught in a bit of a cold wind that aggravated it all the way back up again. Um, or at least it did for like, like that sort of day. Um, then on the, the second week that I had off, uh, so the week that I was on holiday, it wasn't really playing up noticeably that much like there's probably a slight sort of ache in the background but it wasn't like the level that I'd been used to so I, it was kind of like I didn't really pay any attention to it so that's usually a good indication that it's not really playing up that much. Second shift back at work I was already starting to feel it again <laughs> and again I don't know if it's to do specifically with the atmospheric pressure in work uh, whether it's to do with the fact that in work I do wear both glasses and a mask. Um, I wear the glasses in work so that I can read the screens because I'm only like a very small fraction so it's short sighted so I don't really need it in my day to day life but for reading the screens I absolutely need it for. Um, so I don't know if it's a combination of that plus the hat plus the mask where it's just like putting pressure sort of here which then sort of aggravates this bit faster than it would normally. I did notice on the morning of the second shift, like just as I was about to walk out onto the floor, I did get a massive, massive earache in one of my ears that almost made me go, hey, I just gotta go and go out on the floor for a few minutes because this really hurts. Um, so I don't know if whatever's going on here is connected to something going on around here as well as I said once that massive ear pain had sort of passed that's when my jaw started to niggle uh, my jaw is niggling again now um, I've been feeling it for most of the filming of this video so I'm really hoping that this video is actually filming because there's something going on right now that's indicating that's not filming and I'm getting very worried about that but fingers crossed it is actually filming um, but yeah, it was definitely one of those things where, like, the second shift back, and I was expecting it to sort of, like, start playing up again, but I thought, well, I, I, I it, like, the pain is almost non-existent, um, at, the, you know, at the end of the, the holiday period, it's not been playing up too much during the second week, um, I, like, feel like it's, like, heading in a positive direction, so it's at least been rested, um, so I was like, I was prepared for like, to get through like maybe this first week and then for it to start playing up again from the second week. No, second shift. And I was just like, this is ridiculous. So there's definitely something wrong with my jaw. <laughs> what? 
100% certain there is something wrong with my jaw. Um, and I'd still, no indication yet, um, other than like it will be an 18 week waiting time from uh, the point of which they receive my referral, I guess. Um, so I'm probably at this point about five, six weeks at best into that waiting time. Uh, before I will get an appointment, so I'm imagining I'm not going to hear anything for at least a month, which hopefully I will get like a month notice. Um, if not, work are pretty good, so I will like apologise and go like just switch this day for this day if, if needs be, like if, if I absolutely have to, or hopefully I'd know maybe I can get the appointment shifted on to like another day in the same week or something. I don't know, it's just. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I, I feel like I really do need this appointment um, two weeks off and then coming back and my jaw's already starting to niggle again, like within days, like we're not even within days, within one day, <laughs> like the morning of the second day back at work and my jaw is already niggling again. That suggests to me that like there is definitely an issue there, there's definitely something going on there. Um, and it's not just a case of, oh yeah, if I get enough rest, it'll be fine. Two weeks of work should have been enough rest. Two weeks of not doing like all the stuff that I do at work, all the talking that I do at work should have been more than enough time. I mean, granted, I was like not silent during that stretch of time, but the fact that like the pain had reduced means that, you know, there is definitely something going on. Um where it is definitely being aggravated by something maybe specifically in work but then again it's playing up now and I'm not in work so yeah it it's yeah that's basically the situation I'm in yeah all right anyway um I hope you found this one sort of interesting I hope you're looking forward to seeing whatever it is I'm going to be talking about next time and I will see you next time see ya if you've enjoyed this video, consider checking out some of my others, and if you like what you see, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, see ya!